Control is an action-adventure game developed by Remedy and released back in 2019, showcasing the impressive capabilities of Remedy's Northlight engine. With its gorgeous lighting, high-quality assets and PBR materials, advanced physics simulation and destructible environments, and the overall graphical fidelity. And I have been eager to cover this game for quite some time, but due to time constraints, it was challenging to do so. However, given the current lack of new big game releases, I believe this is the perfect opportunity to delve into Control's graphical settings and also discuss a great mod from Filippo Charpini, one of Remedy's developers that worked on the game. So without any further ado, let's get going. But before we do, if you are tired of using mundane unlimited internet browsers every day, today's video sponsor Opera GX provides a fully customizable browser tailored specifically for gamers with fantastic features, starting with GX modes. These unique modes allow you to transform various aspects including background music, keyboard sound, opening and closing tab sound, and gorgeous wallpapers and colors. All these modifications can be easily controlled with one simple click. And if you desire further customization, Opera GX provides options to personalize the interface with dark and light modes, reverse themes, and even more animated wallpapers. The possibilities to make it truly your own are endless. Another standout feature is GX Corner, which grants you swift access to all the latest gaming news, games releases, and deals. To stay up to date, with the gaming world right from your browser's homepage. And switching to Opera GX is a hustle-free experience. You can seamlessly import all your settings from your previous browser with just one simple click. So if you are ready to elevate your internet browsing experience, download Opera GX using my link down at the description below. And big thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Let's kick off with image quality. Now the game natively only supports DLSS and unfortunately doesn't have any FSR option. But there is a way to mod FSR into the game. I can't use this since I already have an RTX GPU but I'll leave the link at the description with the instructions on how to install it. Now when it comes to the comparison between GAA and DLSS, we can clearly see that DLSS offers much better and clearer image that preserves more details. Control also includes multi sample anti-aliasing or MSAA, which from what I have seen improves alpha textures with transparencies like here with this foliage, and performance-wise, MSAA runs significantly faster than usual, because going from off to X2 costs 5% and to X4 around 11%. And lastly in image quality we have DLAA, which is an option that can be added with Filippo's mod. And it gives all the benefits of DLSS, albeit at native resolution without any upscaling from a lower resolution. And performance wise DLAA is almost similar to TAA with 4x MSAA, but visually it looks a lot better and more stable. So here for image quality my recommendation if you have an RTX GPU to play with DLSS or DLAA and I believe that even modded FSR will look better than the game's native TAA, especially at higher resolutions like 1440p or 4K. Now let's move on to texture resolution. Natively the game offers 4 options from low to ultra, but with Filippo's mod we can add a new max option, which mainly improves the slow texture streaming that can occur when using ultra as you can see here. And when it comes to the visual comparison between the options, it's really hard to notice the difference, because the texture resolution setting controls the amount of allocated VRAM more than the actual quality of textures. Like here for example, I'm using low and as you can see textures look fine and not low res, and the game is allocating around 5.7 GB. Now if I switch to ultra textures, there isn't a big visual difference compared to low, and the allocated VRAM jumped to 6.2 GB. But if I keep ultra textures and switch the resolution to 4K, the VRAM is now 7.5 GB. And finally to hit the VRAM limit, I'll enable ray trace reflections. And here you can see that the game switched to low texture resolution because of the VRAM limitation. So even when using low, the game will load most high resolution textures as 
long as you have enough VRAM. But if you hit the VRAM limit of your GPU, the game will switch to lower resolution textures. So here I recommend using max option to eliminate the slow texture streaming. But if you notice that some textures are low res, switch to ultra or high options. Next we have texture filtering and here as usual this setting doesn't have a big performance impact and even when going from low to high there is around 1% cost so here I recommend keeping this one at high. For object detail controls the level of detail for objects and the distance at which they maintain a higher geometric quality as you can see here and performance wise there is almost no difference between the options so here I recommend leaving for object detail at high. Next we have shadow resolution and this one adjusts the resolution of rasterized shadow maps in the game like here. And because on control shadows are one of the weakest visual aspects and even with high shadows exhibit a low resolution appearance, this shadow setting has negligible performance impact even when going from low to high. So here I recommend keeping this one at high. And shadow filtering can refine and make shadow maps look a little bit better and cost around 1% when going from low to medium. So here keep this one at medium. Moving on to volumetric lighting which controls the resolution and quality of volumetric effects. And higher options look less flickery and more defined but similar to shadows, volumetrics even with the highest option at native 1440p still have some temporal instability and artifacting. And Filippo's mode provides an option which increases the resolution of volumetric effects beyond what the high option offers. But it's not cheap to use as enabling this setting for volumetrics can cost up to 22%. As for the regular options performance, going from low to medium costs around 3% and to high 13%. So here I recommend medium volumetrics. Foliage quality from what I've seen controls the shading quality of foliage as you can see here. And performance wise going from low to medium can cost up to 3%. So here I recommend keeping this one at medium. SSAO or screen space ambient occlusion adds contact shadows in areas where two objects intersect and where objects block or obstruct light. And performance wise enabling SSAO can cost a small 3%. So here I recommend keeping it on. Screen space reflection quality is next and this one of course controls the fidelity of reflections like here where medium looks a bit noisy compared to high. And on the performance side SSR is one of the most demanding settings because going from low to medium costs 2% and to high 17%. So here I recommend keeping SSR at medium. Global reflections adjust the accuracy of the game world reflections especially in situations where screen space and formation are missing and SSR fail like here and performance wise at the worst case scenario going from off to medium costs around 21% and to high 23%. Now turning off global reflections can give big boost to performance but doing so can also drastically impact the game's visuals. That's why I recommend keeping this one at medium unless you are desperate for more performance. Now let's move on to ray tracing, starting with ray traced reflections. Now because the game is filled with reflective surfaces, RT reflections has the most noticeable visual impact compared to the other ray tracing effects, and enabling RT reflections can cost up to 17%. However, the problem here is that the game is using limited rays per pixel, which makes dropping the internal resolution or using the LSS drastically impact the stability of RT reflections, like here. Filippo's mod offers an option to increase the amount of samples for ray tracing, which reduces the amount of noise and RT reflections, but using this setting can drop performance by 43%. Ray trace transparent reflections when enabled introduce mirror-like reflectivity to transparent objects like here, and enabling this one can cost 17%.
And finally, for Archie Reflections, we have Ray Trace Debris, which allows destruction debris to be reflected and included on Archie Reflections. And in most of the tests I've done, I couldn't notice any performance difference when enabling this one. But keep in mind that during intense combat scenarios, there could be a potential decrease in performance when this effect is enabled. Next we have Ray Trace and Direct Diffuse Lighting, which adds real-time Archie global illumination to the game and that leads to a natural and more accurate ambient occlusion and local light bouncing which makes the color of some surfaces spread to the surrounding environments, like here. And on top of that, enabling Archie Diffuse Lighting can get rid of some light leakage problem in some areas, like here with this door. And performance-wise enabling this effect can cost around 20%. Also using Using SSAO with RTGI can lead to some performance loss without any visual benefits. That's why I recommend turning off SSAO if ray trace and direct diffuse lighting is enabled. And finally for ray tracing we have ray traced contact shadows, which covers small and thin geometry where standard shadow maps struggle the most, and enabling this effect can cost up to 18%. Now if you want to enable ray tracing, I recommend giving RT reflections the priority since they can greatly improve the game's presentation. Ray trace diffuse lighting is also great, but you won't notice it during normal gameplay. And the same goes for ray traced contact shadows. And before we go to the optimized settings and the comparison with high preset, let's quickly take a look at the two APIs used in the game and compare the X11 and the X12. Now side by side, the biggest difference which is more apparent is the VRAM usage. The X11 allocates and uses considerably less VRAM compared to the X12. And on the performance side, there is no significant difference between the two. But keep in mind that using the X11 of course will block ray tracing and also the LSS. And I think the X11 is more useful if you have a GPU with low amount of VRAM and you don't prioritize ray tracing, DLSS or FSR. Now based on everything we saw so far, these are my recommended settings. Now let's quickly compare optimized settings with high preset at this area which is one of the most demanding areas in the game. Here I'm using DLAA on both sides and performance wise we can see on average around 28% boost by going from high presets to optimized settings. Now in general, Control is a visually stunning game and even without ray tracing, the game looks excellent. However, certain effects such as shadows and volumetrics can sometimes have a negative impact on the overall presentation, even with the highest options. Filippo Martini with his mod tried to mitigate most of these problems, but that comes with a big performance impact, which explains why Remedy initially provided limited options to enhance these effects. Given that they had to work with the constraints of the old gen consoles and older PC hardware. And I can't wait to see what Remedy will offer with their next game Alan Wake 2 later this year with much powerful hardware this time around. And with that we arrive at the end. Thank you so much for watching and for your time. If you enjoyed the video leave a like and if not leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.